Good morning. Hi. Hi. Today's reading is from Matthew 26, verses 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Thank you. Hi, everyone. How's everybody doing today? We'll start over here. Just wanted to, <laughs> sorry. Never know how to answer that. If I haven't met you yet, uh, my name's uh, Trevor. I'm the pastor here. I just want to welcome you here. I hope that not only uh, do, you, do you find us friendly, that you're comfortable, and that you find this place, uh, um, I hope you find the love of Christ here. Uh, more than anything, this church was built to, uh, with the idea of meeting like they did in the first century, where we just kind of met in a small space, uh, and we just gathered around, we, we shared uh, stories, we shared songs, and uh, we just shared the love of Jesus Christ. Our, our vision here is to love God, to love ourselves, and to love our neighbor, and I hope that we achieve that. That being said, Peter is a boob. Um, he, this guy continues to... Uh, mess up. His, the, the worst thing is, have you ever had a, a day or a week or a moment where you have had an oops moment? Uh, you, you've either said the wrong thing or you've put your foot in your mouth, you know, or uh, you, you've, you've had, you know, done something that you shouldn't have or anything like that. You kind of hope that those things kind of go away. Well, Peter, every Every mistake this guy made, they wrote it down, and for 2,000 years, they have shared this in church. We use his mistakes to worship. This poor guy. Uh, he, if, if all of the mistakes that were in his life were on a resume, in today's world, this guy would never be a pastor of a church. He would never even be a greeter at Walmart. There's, he would not pass the interviewing process. There are many things that he's done. The first off, the scene here is that, uh, you know, Jesus has been taken away and Peter has followed behind and he's sitting out there on this porch-like area. Jesus is being tried by Caiaphas and the religious leaders and Peter's out there and he's standing there trying to be nonchalant and people start to recognize him. One of them says, hey, aren't you, aren't you the guy that was with Jesus? And he says, no, I haven't. I don't, don't know what you're talking about. And then he says, you know, somebody else comes up and says, I'm sure you were with them, weren't you? Weren't you, you hung out with these guys. You know, they've been all over the place. You've been with them. And he says, I don't know anything what you're talking about. And somebody says, it's by your accent. You know, the Galileans, they had accents. We just like we have regions and all of this kind of stuff. And he's, he, it's, the Bible says that he swears. He, he, sometimes we try to work that as in like he swears an oath. No, he actually cursed. Uh, they had some, they had, you know, the, the words that we use today, they had back then, only they were in Greek. Uh, but they sound so much better, you know, when you read them in the King James Version, you know. Um, but he swore up and down and he, you know, he gets animated and stuff and he says, this is, I don't know who this person is. And then the rooster crows. And at that moment, he realizes not only has he proven that Jesus has the power of prophecy, he's also proven that once again, this guy has messed up. Once again, this guy has added to the list of things that he has screwed up over the years. His resume, like I said, is one that uh, just doesn't look good. Let's start with the first. You got the walking on water. Uh, welcome back. Um, <laughs> You got, you got the walking on water where Jesus does this miraculous thing. Peter's in a boat, and he's walking on water. And Peter says, oh, hey, I, ooh, I really want to try that. Hey, Jesus, can I try that? And he says, well, do you have your floaty? And he says, no. But so he goes, okay, well, we can just come on. And he walks, and then he, once he gets out there, he says, oh, what, this doesn't make sense. I'm not supposed to be able to do this. And he sinks. 
And Jesus has to scold him and say, hey, hey, you don't have enough faith. Peter, and that's the first thing on his thing. So if you're going, if you're keeping track, that's the first thing. Sinks down, Jesus says, you, you screwed this one up. Then you've got the get behind me, Satan. If you are having any resume to be a religious leader, the first thing they're going to ask you is, did Jesus ever refer to you as Satan? <laughs> you hope they don't ask that question in Peter's case because that's what happened. Jesus is trying to tell people that he's got to do this mission and all of this kind of stuff. And Peter's out there going, I'll fight you to the death and they'll protect you and everything like this. His voice actually gets like that. He says, I'm going to help and stuff. And, and so Jesus is saying, you're, you're blocking, you're getting in the way, you're doing the devil's work here by trying to throw me off past. And so he says, get behind me, Satan. That's a downer. You know, that's one of those things where it's like, man, the son of God just called me Satan. How do I, you know, uh, that's weird. I'm not going to share that on Facebook. Um, and then he fell asleep. We covered this just a couple weeks ago where Jesus wants his closest friends to be around him while he's in grief and he's in mourning and Peter cannot stay awake. And Jesus calls him out by name again and says, Peter, why can't you just stay awake? And Peter answers him by snoring and falling asleep again three times. 2,000 years we're talking about this. Then the ear, you know, uh, if, you're ever in a, if you're ever in an interview process and somebody says, you ever maimed anyone? <laughs> That's when you just, Peter throwing the knife, we just covered this a little bit ago, lobs a guy's ear off, you know, and he, how do you explain, well, you know, Jesus put it back, you know, it's, it's all fun and games and everything like that, and then he gets scolded because Jesus points again at him and says, you're an idiot, you know, you get, put the knife away and all this kind of stuff, and so Peter runs off and feeling bad, and now we've got the de denying Jesus, where he denies him three times. This guy cannot catch a break. This guy continues to be a doofus. And this guy is the one that Jesus said, you are the rock that I'm going to build this church on. If I had one of those, I would not be preaching up here, especially the ear thing, I'm pretty sure. But I, I think it's fair to say that every, every single one of us has had an oops moment, a time when we have done something we shouldn't have. Quick show of hands, has anyone had an oops moment? If you are not raising your hand, this is your oops moment right now. <laughs> I'll go over a couple here. Uh, I was newly married. My wife, Allison, is over there. We, uh, we, we've recently celebrated nine years. Yeah. Uh, I've heard, actually, that uh, somebody over here has celebrated... 50 years of marriage, right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. what's, what's even more impressive, they were married when they were 45, so you're looking pretty good. <laughs> well done. It's the daily walks, I'm telling you. Well, when I uh, first got together with uh, Allison, uh, her mom, Nancy, uh, my future mother-in-law, was so kind and just so welcoming. Uh, it welcomed me into the family, so hospitable, just, I mean, a delight. And I thought, you know, I was really falling for Allison, so I'm going to write her an email. And I wrote this email about just how wonderful she was and how nice it was to be, you know, kind and everything. And uh, I, I sent it to her mom, Nancy. Thought I'd get some good points, you know wouldn't hurt. And then uh, Allison pointed out after I had already sent it that the entire email I referred to her as Karen. So yeah, that's a bad thing right there. Um, it gets worse. Um, when Allison and I were dating, I was pastoring a church and for the first time Allison came to the church uh, to, to watch me preach and everything like that. We had a large crowd. We had about 130 people at this church. And I decided to introduce Allison to the congregation. I called her Amanda. 
Yeah. What's even worse is Amanda was my secretary's name. Uh, I really wish all of this was false, but yeah. Uh, so if I get your name wrong, it's nothing compared to anything that I've done here. Uh, dishwasher soap. I ran out of dishwasher soap one day, and I thought, well, we have Dawn. So I thought we would take the, you know, I, it was not my fault. I was left unsupervised. I was 40, you know, 45 at the time. And I poured the Dawn liquid soap into the thing, and then I went to get some work done. And then I came back a little while later to find that I had just entered what looked like an episode of I Love Lucy because I'm kidding you not, the kitchen floor had soap bubbles up to here all over. Couldn't clean it, just moved. That's what we did, so. <laughs> yeah, that dishwasher broke last week too, so. Oh, shut up. Um, <laughs> Oh, and here's the one, too. Uh, the chairs, these chairs, these uncomfortable chairs, we're getting new chairs, but these uncomfortable chairs, uh, I, I know that 90% of you have a numb butt right now. Uh, this was my suggestion when we first came. I, uh, I was eating at a Godfather's Pizza in Omaha, and I texted our um, uh, leadership team, and I said, I, I've got the perfect chair for our place. To my defense, Seth, who is running camera, agreed. So that's, I wasn't in this all alone here. Oh, and to add one more that's not on the list, uh, when I grew out my beard, uh, it, it comes out more white, you know? So I tried that just for men, you know? Should be just called just for idiots, but because I didn't know what I was doing, and the next day, uh, Smurf blue, my entire, yeah, had to shave everything and all that stuff. I've learned, I mean, you've probably learned this in 50 years of marriage. I've only learned this in, in 10, uh, but to uh, just repeat the words, I'm sorry, you're right, and it was my fault. That's the key to a happy marriage right there, so. So I've done all those things. I've had my oops moments, and I've also denied Jesus. I have also denied Jesus. I would like to say that I've denied Jesus only once in my life, but I have denied Jesus over and over again. Uh, I have not grown up in a church. The hymns that we sing and stuff, those are new to me. I, I, uh, I started going to church when I was in my 30s. My family, we, we, we considered ourselves Christian, but we didn't really go to, to church, so I don't really have experience with church. Um, and there's one, but there's one particular time that I remember that I, uh, I, I had a past that um, I made a lot of mistakes and a lot of poor choices and everything like that. And when I was in my mid-30s, I started to uh, uh, experiment with Christianity and wanted to delve a little bit further into it. I started to feel this kind of this kind of closeness with Christ, that, uh, I, a feeling I had not ever experienced before, and I was really starting to understand that I was loved for who I was, and it was an overwhelming experience. And I was attending this church at the time, and at the time they had these um, rubber band bracelets that people were wearing, you know, like the Live Strong and things like that. Uh, young people would, would wear a bunch of them to look hip. Uh, Middle-aged people would wear them to look like they were young, never worked. But I wore one, and I ran into a uh, friend of mine that was from my, my old days uh, when I was making poor choices. And we got to talking, and it ended up that I needed to give them a ride someplace. And as we were riding, you know, they're sitting here, and I'm, I'm driving, and I've got the bracelet right there. And they looked at that, and they said, what's, what's that bracelet there? And this would have been a moment where I could have said, you know, amazing things have happened to me. I, I, I'm turning my life around. Uh, I, I'm feeling more about this message of love and kindness and all of this stuff. But instead, I just went, oh, it's nothing, you know. And they said, but it says Jesus on there. Are you, are you like religious now? And this is a point where I could have actually said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing uh, Christ in a way I've never experienced before. I'm, I'm experiencing unconditional love in a way that I've never experienced before. I'm feeling better about myself. I could have really shared my honest self at that moment. I could have really shared who I was, 
But instead, I got embarrassed, and I just said, it's nothing. And I feel bad about that even today because this is a person that was in the same boat that I was just a little bit before, and this is a person that really could have used that message, a person that could have really used this message of love. But instead, I was afraid that they'd think that I was uh, some sort of Jesus freak or some political person, you know, or uh, trying to convert and all of this kind of stuff. So I, I didn't say a word. And so that was uh, a time that I really did truly deny Jesus. And I'd love to say that that was my only isolated moment, but when I was uh, creeping into Christianity, there were times when I still felt embarrassed about it. I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want to sound like one of those people that I kept seeing on TV. You know, growing up not being in a church, not experiencing community, I felt like I was, uh, the, my only comparison was the, the, the people on TV that had the hair that, you know, they just kept combing for, you know, ungodly reasons. And uh, I didn't have hair, so I didn't feel like I fit in. But um, that's beside the point. But it, it was just for men. It just all went away after a while. But um, there are times when I felt like it was just too embarrassing to talk. Peter was fearful for his life. I was fearful of being uncomfortable and having an uncomfortable conversation. Those are the mistakes I made. And the mistakes that I made was that I did not make a connection with somebody. You know, since then, since I've been a pastor, since I've grown in the faith and all of this kind of stuff, I live and breathe Jesus Christ. I truly do. I believe Jesus Christ is the way, the answer, all of that kind of stuff. I believe that uh, every single one of us uh, will eventually, uh, regardless of who we are in this world, we will eventually meet Jesus Christ. I truly believe that. And we will experience that unconditional love. I do believe that. And I do share that with people because it's a part of me. It's a part of who I am. I'm not ashamed anymore to share just who my honest self is. And Christ calls us to share our honest self. But there are other ways that we can deny Christ too. Not just by having that conversation. We can deny Christ anytime that we are not living up to Christ. You know, our vision here is love God, love yourself, love your neighbor. We didn't just come up on that during, on a whim. This is the message of Christ that we have here. It's a very, we like to call it a very deep and simple message. You know, Christ tells us to love God. Christ tells us to love our neighbor as we would ourselves. That means we have to love ourselves. That means we have to love our neighbor. Everything that we uh, revolve around here is a message of Christ. Christ tells us to love our neighbor as they are. Christ tells us to love each other as we are. Christ encourages me to be my honest self and encourage my neighbor to be their honest self. If I'm not allowing that by my very actions, I'm, I'm not following at that moment Christianity. If, if I disagree with you, if I disagree with who you are, and I try to villainize you. Say you and I, I'm going to pick on you because you're new. You'll probably never come back. I'm sorry, but this is your, you were right in my eye line there. Uh, and usually the people with hair I love to pick on. Because <laughs> is your dad bald? Dang it. All right. Okay, that's not going to happen. But say that you and I have a, 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 a debate. You are on one side of the political spectrum. I'm on the other side of the political spectrum. I'm encouraged to villainize you. I'm even encouraged to wish something poor or bad would happen to you. If I'm doing that, I'm not loving my neighbor. If I'm doing that, if I'm not respecting the ground, the holy ground that he walks on, I am not practicing the true faith of Christianity. In that regard, I'm denying Christ. If I can say, even though we disagree, and I disagree fully or whatever to the degree, but I still know that you are a child of God, and I still know that you deserve respect and kindness, then I'm practicing Christianity. Then I'm acknowledging Christ. We, as Christians, have a long history of saying about Christ, talking about Christ, but with our actions, we deny it. During the COVID epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, I kept hearing social media things where people that called themselves Christians 
were actually hoping that the other people, the people that they disagreed with, the people on other sides, the people of different uh, values, different cultures, whatever, whatever they disagreed with at the moment, they were actually hoping that they would get it. This is before the vaccines, this is before anything. They were hoping that they would get something that would be life-threatening to them. That's not acknowledging Christ. That's denying Christ in our lives. The hardest part about being a Christian is to truly love those that it seems like only God could love. At the very least, to respect them and to give them dignity, but not to villainize them and not to wish pain upon them. That's worse than just not talking about Christ. The mere mention that he denied Christ, Peter showed us a remarkable example. He re had remorse. He went away, and as a grown man, he cried. He shared exactly what he was feeling. That's a, that's a lesson we can learn. Another lesson that he can, we can learn is that he continued to try to do the right thing the next day. But the biggest lesson that we can learn is that no matter what scale of denying Christ I've talked about, and I think to some regard, every one of us can, uh, can relate to something that I've said there. The biggest lesson that we've learned is that Christ said, yeah, this guy screws up all the time. He's even going to deny me three times. But he's the one. He's the one I'm building my church on. Jesus did not call us to be perfect, never has, never will. Jesus does not create that Christian that uh, sits and just looks all polished and, and uh, wonderful and doesn't swear and all of that kind of stuff. Jesus calls boneheads and says, that is who Christianity is. So if he can start again, you can start again. Whatever we've done in our lives, whatever we've done to deny Jesus, whether it's with our words, our lack of words, or with our actions, we can start again. We are exactly who you are is exactly who Christ called. It's exactly who Christ needs in our church. And we need to remember that for who we are, and we need to remember that for who they are. Wherever we go, we are in God's kingdom. We are in God's church. We are among God's people. I pray that we always remember that and we act that way. Because that's what being a Christian is all about. By the way, oops spelled backward is spoo. Means nothing. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, every one of us will fall flat on our face. Sometimes we fall flat on our face and other times we take the other people down with us. Help us to help us to pick ourselves up again. And when we can't pick ourselves up, help pick, up, pick us up. Help us forgive ourselves. Help us to walk again. Help us to start again. And help us to remember that you were right there with us, loving us all the way. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen.